Okay, so now let's talk about uh, cardiac muscle action potential. Uh, you, you can see this uh, very famous graph that you must have seen before. Um, this is uh, a graph which depicts the electrical changes when a cardiac ventricular muscle uh, is stimulated. This is what you know. Uh, however, let me just add uh, from the onset that this graph or variation of this graph uh, is found in uh, Purkinje fiber stimulation as well, and also atrial muscle uh, stimulation. Okay, so keep keep keep, keep an outlook uh, on the on on this part of the diagram uh, when I start explaining the different uh, components of the main graph. Uh, most of the American books refer to the various parts of this action potential graph uh, in these numerical ways, uh, zero, then one, two, three, and four. Okay, now I'll explain to you uh, each in a, in a bit of detail so that you remember. Uh, from nerve action potential, you remember there are uh, basically two main parts of the action potential. Uh, one is uh, rapid uh, uh, depolarization, and then there is repolarization. Here you see something extra. You see there is an upstroke. Obviously, this is depolarization. Okay. Uh, hold on. You see that this is depolarization, and then you see that this is repolarization. If I were to just quickly make for ref for your reference uh, a nerve action potential, it would be something like this okay pardon my drawing uh, this is the depolarization this would be the repolarization you see that there's a sharp uh, beak like thing on top but there is nothing in between it's just simple uh, two uh, uh, two lines of the graphs and that's that this is now however when you look at uh, cardiac muscle uh, atrial muscle or perkanji system uh, you see that there is a difference uh, clearly from the outlook, you can see the difference between these two graphs. Uh, and the difference is this bit here. Okay, this is the plateau. I'm sure you've heard of this, the plateau portion, which um, uh, uh, puts the uh, repolarization curve a bit farther away from the depolarization curve. You don't see that uh, uh, in the nerve action potential. And here, this is, this is also not correct in actual experiments uh, it's literally very very close so it's very close in actual actual data of nerve fibers action potential is something like this okay this is just to describe the two phases in effect the different the distance between these two curves is very little however uh, as i mentioned atria ventricular uh, muscle and uh, perkanji you have a, a very uh, clear distance between depolarization and repolarization this is because of this particular phase called the plateau. Okay, so if, if we just look at uh, from this from this uh, background, uh, and you need to know your nerve action potential to understand cardiac action, action potential, uh, you see that uh, phase zero is your rapid upstroke like this. This is the depolarization that you must have uh, studied in nerve action potential. And who is behind that? Sodium is behind that. So whenever you reach threshold potential here uh, and enough uh, sodium has come in uh, to make a current of sodium, uh, what happens is just sodium just floods in. And you can see that is a big and uh, thick arrow uh, from ECF pointing towards ICF, so from outside to inside, which causes, if you are uh, uh, measuring the voltage, it causes the uh, curve or the voltage from on, on the inside of the probe is inside the cell to, to register a sharp upstroke in the positivity. So you see that this membrane potential here in millivolts is going towards the positive value. Of course, you know that the resting membrane potential is minus, is around minus 90. It does vary in different books, but Guyton spe uh, specifies it minus 90 V. For the undergrads, we mention it minus 90. Okay. Uh, this is the basic concept. Um, another thing is look at the look at the upper point here. It corresponds to a value of uh, plus twenty millivolts. Okay. Now you, if an examiner asks you in a viva, they can ask you what's the nerds potential for sodium for sodium. Okay, the nerds potential for sodium you know is 
uh, is is uh, more than 20. This uh, situation uh, plus 20 is, is quite low. Uh, so what happens is in uh, nerve action potential and in cardiac action potential, sodium is uh, limited. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's retarded. It's pulled back to not go up to its nerves potential. Why? Because of this diagram. This is again, when we go into the basics, you must have uh, read this in your nerve action potential. So I'll just be quick about it. This is a sodium channel. Uh, this is, let me change the color here. This is an activation gate, uh, uh, pardon, activation gate. It's on the outside and you have the, on the inside, you have the inactivation. Gate. At rest, this is the configuration. The outside gate, activation gate is closed while the inside is open. As soon as you depolarize the cell, so the upstroke scenario, both are open so that sodium can just pour in, okay, as, as is shown here. However, in repolarization, what happens is as soon as this, look, this is an instantaneous uh, situation. It, sodium channel is a fast sodium channel. So it's just like, it goes like this, like this. It's really, really, really fast, okay? So it's, it's blink of an eye. It opens, uh, the stuff goes in, sodium comes in. And bam, as soon as the, the voltage is around plus 20, the, the inactivation gates, they close. So there is no further movement of sodium ions inside. Okay. So the current was moving like a torrent. It was like a train. Sodium was coming bam, bam, bam inside. But as soon as you uh, close, obviously, the uh, uh, inactivation gate from inside, uh, it, it can't come in. So as soon as it can't come in, it the word is it ceases to exist and it starts coming back down. Okay, we'll talk about that. So uh, it, if if you had if this was not the case of voltage affecting the gates, especially the inactivation gate, and if you let sodium through, okay, through any other channel, it would go up to plus sixty, which is its equilibrium potential, it's nerves potential, but it falls short because of the situation that I explained. Okay. You would have read this in your nerve physiology. Okay. So this is the, this is the upstroke or uh, uh, phase zero, and this is where it stops. Okay. A bit of extra information for uh, MBBS and uh, postgrad students from this point onwards here. And then here you are coming back towards the resting membrane potential. Is that right? That's correct. So during this situation here, uh, this voltage here, okay? This is where inactivation gate said, no more, I can't bear this positivity, I'm gonna close. So at plus 20, you have the inactivation gates closed. Now what happens? As soon as the membrane starts going through its other phases, one, two, three, and then four is resting membrane potential. It now is becoming less positive and becoming obviously, uh, in other words, becoming more negative. Now what happens? Look, you can learn it like this. Inactivation gate opens when there is negativity. Remember that it will help you in your nerve action potential as well. Okay. It does not like positivity. It likes negativity. That's where it becomes open for business. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, you opened it suddenly during upstroke, but as soon as it realized that, oh, there's so much positivity, it just closed on you. But now you, you are bringing it down. So now it starts to open up. So answer this question. Say like, this is the, this is one, one point. And let's pick another point right just before resting membrane potential. And this third line is resting membrane potential. Okay. Let me write down some values here. Uh, this is 60, minus 60 as, as it shows. This is minus 70 millivolts. And this is your RMP minus 90, okay? Guess where this muscle will be most responsive to say, start a new action potential. If an appropriately strong stimulus were to be given to it. Or simpler in, in simpler in simpler terms, which point would most 
sodium channels will be available as in their inactivation gates are open for business which point is it 60 70 or 90 the perceptive student would say that at 60 at minus 60 it is still recovering from that big positive positivity bomb that you threw at it so you will have say uh, uh, many sodium channels will be open but uh, many will be closed as well okay but as you move downwards towards more negativity you say at 70 there will be more sodium uh, channels will be available because their inactivation gates will be more open because they like negativity as we have established before and at minus 90 everything will be open every sodium channel is now available for the next cycle okay so what they worked out is they 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 do a formula dv over dt so this is just what i explained but in mathematical form uh, delta v delta t is change in volume a uh, change in uh, voltage as a function of time okay so uh, 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 voltage change uh, as a as a function of time d over t this value will be highest at the rmp and also near rmp and will be least as you go up the stream okay now let's move on to uh, the second phase phase one uh, this is that uh, this is this this small portion here it's called the early repolarization and it is early isn't it because what you what we discussed it we have seized the depolarization suddenly and now from now this point if the voltage comes back a bit then it flattens out okay so what is this this phase here is the early repolarization phase okay uh, it's an interesting phase. Uh, it's usually asked uh, from good students in Vibers uh, to trump them. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky situation. You are obviously nervous. It's your first Viber. Uh, the examiner has just asked you to draw, physically draw during a Viber, the nerve action, uh, the ventricular muscle action potential, and you've just driven it and drawn it and uh, you think you've, you've done it. However, the examiner then uh, poses a question that uh, Betaji, why have you drawn this like this? So what, what is this? You say it's early repolarization, and why is it like this? So this is the question. Okay, now let me attempt to answer that. What happened here on at this part? What happened here is that you triggered an action potential, okay? Uh, suddenly voltage-gated sodium channels opened up and you have this spectacular upstroke and uh, and that's that. However, and not shown, surprisingly not shown in this diagram, is, uh, let me draw it like this, is there's a very little feeble upstroke in potassium concentration, uh, potassium movement. Here we go. This might be surprising for some of you. But the ones who have done nerve properly, nerve action potential properly, uh, they would understand what, what I'm talking about. Uh, what happens is when you trigger an action potential, when you disturb a, a, a cell membrane, uh, the most prominent change is in the sodium channels. And you see that they get, they get, they get disturbed, they're very fast. So what, what we mean by fast is the switching of the gates is so fast and then the inflow is so fast because you have uh, uh, ECF uh, sodium, any uh, sodium outside the cell is, is much more than inside, right? So as soon as you open the gates of the dam, it just blasts itself in and changes the voltage in, in only the positive direction upwards. But the smaller change that also takes place by a slower potassium efflux channel also gets triggered, not shown in this diagram. So right from the word go, you have potassium efflux, sir. Efflux, God, this is difficult to write like this, okay? Efflux, okay? Right from this here, but it is, its value is very, very low, okay? And it gets eclipsed, it gets, uh, uh, 
it's it's nothing in front of that spectacular sodium influx okay because of the amounts however as soon as you seize the sodium uh, influx and this is like a no man's land now but it's not because that potassium thing that you started right from the word go it will now express itself how will it express itself what is it known for potassium efflux you know this it is known for repolarization repolarization okay so it will do what it 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 knows to do it will try to bring the voltage back towards negativity by throwing out potassium ions okay there are two factors here one uh, which causes this uh, phase one if somebody asks you uh, one is you have suddenly seized so uh, sodium influx and the small potassium current in the background uh, it expresses itself by early repolarization another point here to mention uh, and again this is for, for the good students who would remember this is what did you do during the upstroke you packed in side the cell lots of positive charge sodium charge right so sodium is there we know that potassium already is in abundance in the cell at rest already okay now there is these guests from outside the sodium but they both are positive they both will repel each other positive positive repels so as soon as you pack the cell with sodium and now there is nothing further coming in what will happen they will start to repel each other and since potassium uh, channels are slow to open and they have had some time now to open potassium now gradually starts to be repelled out of the cell as well so both of these things stopping of sodium channel okay and that small current is now expressing itself point number 1 point number 2 the repelling of sodium from potassium uh, between these two also facilitates uh, potassium uh, efflux okay we move on to the calcium bit here now so this is phase number 2 it is uh, the plateau the famous plateau uh, and you see a line which is sort of flat here now why is it flat okay this is where he does mention why is it flat so we i've just uh, mentioned to you the sodium efflux uh, the potassium efflux which now is sizable okay here it was little during the phase 1 as i just drew uh, previously but now since the voltage is now even further low right around here it's closing on to zero and then further below potassium can now properly express itself and the, the channels have 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 opened more okay but also present are calcium ions in this type of tissue okay again uh, phase 0 and 1 is exhibited by ventricle atria erpan kanji okay plateau plateau is most prominent remember this most prominent in perkanji and ventricular muscle okay now what happens is potassium efflux is balanced by calcium influx because here you would have l type calcium channels as well for whom the natural habitat is this kind of voltage this is where they express themselves because the bully sodium is now quiet now everything starts to creep up and show itself okay so you see potassium exp expressing itself and you see uh, calcium balancing it out when you have both in parallel one is going out one is coming in obviously the voltage will be a flat line however a lot of stuff is going on as you can see potassium and calcium there's a lot of traffic uh, in opposite directions but the line is flat very importantly calcium is now coming in which means why what why is calcium so important that i have demarcated it like this because calcium is is responsible for the contraction why you are doing all of this is so that the ventricle or the atria they contract okay uh, and hence you see that when calcium comes in it's now available for contraction lactin and myosin and all that business that you've already read okay so this is a uh, phase number 2 okay now uh phase number 3 will will do 
Okay, so now we are left with uh, phase three and phase four. Let's take th phase three first. You see that uh, when the potential comes out of phase two, there is a long roundish uh, curve that then becomes steep and long and long and steep. Okay, so what's going on here is remember during the flat phase, the plateau phase, we said that they both are equal. Now watch closely what happens as we go down this. Okay, sorry, this is not appropriate. Uh, Let's uh, make it like this here. So as we are sloping down in this direction, look what's happening here. You have calcium in influx, but look at the arrows. So the calcium influx is decreasing, okay? However, the potassium in, uh, in the efflux as compared to calcium is increasing. So this is calcium and this is potassium okay now what further happens is when you go further down so this is where you go further down what happens is you'll see that there is no more mention of uh, calcium there's only mention of potassium okay now to the perceptive students let me pose a question without question where is the fun you have in the upper part of uh, phase three, you have this situation, uh, say around here, sorry, around here. Okay. Uh, and then starting from here, right down to here, you have a second situation. In the first situation, you have the balancing act between calcium and potassium, right? But in this one here, you have only potassium. However, and this is the question, the arrows become smaller. What is going on here? So let me rephrase the question so that it's clear. As you go down the repolarization curve, potassium conductance seems to be decreasing. What's going down here? You have always read that repolarization is a function of potass potassium efflux. However, now you see clearly that potassium efflux is decreasing as, as we go down the repolarization curve. Any question? Any uh, any answers? I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Okay, I'm very tempted to answer this, but I won't. Let me hear it from you guys. The phase four, it's simple RMP where everything balances out. However, even here you see that it takes both sodium and calcium to balance out potassium efflux because there are more leaky channels of potassium than there are for sodium and calcium. This completes our action potential um, segment.